I had tried a lot of things. I had tried law school. I had been on medication. I had tried drinking. I had tried not drinking. Nothing seemed to really be of much help to this for this diagnosis, this problem I had with mental illness. Nothing seemed to work. I got into Task Unlimited. I wasn't hopeful. I thought the only way I'm going to survive in this world is through six, big success, and I'm not going to find it at Task. I could not think that I would be able to do be a janitor, successful as a janitor, and that that would actually be enough to carry me. Um, but it was, you know, I uh, I was a janitor eight years, and there's nothing wrong with being a janitor. I know some very intelligent, very capable people that work as janitors. It's a respectable op- occupation. I just didn't think it was for me. But faced with either a choice of, you know, doing laundry time five times a week in, a, in an apartment or uh, working at a job, I decided that uh, janitor was okay. I met a lot of interesting people. I go back to the nineteen late 1980s as a janitor. I met a lot of people, got a lot of uh, conversations that were reliefs and uplifting to me. The people were friendly. I got to meet the workers in the offices where I worked. Um, it was great, and then I can't say enough about the people that I worked with at Task Unlimited, whereas a lot of people on a typical job site, you know, in the real, and while well, Task is the real world, I'm talking about the other world, um, they might be joking about, hey, pal, you're really crazy today. Well, at Task, that was not really such a joke, you know, because in some sense we were crazy. So we talked about other things, and they were supporting. My friend, my friends at Task would ask me, you know, like, how's your uh, writing going, or how's your uh, love life, or, you know, how's church going? And it was uh, things that were built, building on uh, positives. It wasn't all kinds of uh, negative jokes, inside jokes that were hurtful, that would have been hurtful, things that I probably could not really handle so well, you know, at that time anyway, uh, in the job market. It was very uplifting to be with people that had a similar problem and that we could see the light of fair weather in their eyes, and that was enough to keep me going. So at the beginning of the talk, you mentioned a revelation from an angel. Um, Was she still in your life? Yeah, the angel is still in my life. Uh, to this day, she's been there all the time, uh, sometimes uh, a little more farther removed. Um, you know, I try to stay up with her, but she's always about 10 steps ahead of me. She's up in heaven, and I'm here down on earth just trying to uh, keep a grasp on her and looking for her guidance. So did, uh, did you also have a job at the, your church's thrift store? Yeah, I... Uh, about the same time I started my work experience with Task Unlimited, it's about six months after that, I got a Saturday job as a manager at my church thrift store. Now that's been very instrumental to helping me, too. Uh, we, I had to surround myself with positives. When you have a mental illness, a lot can seem negative, and you can't get past the negative. Well, I needed to put myself in a positive situation, and Steeple People Thrift Store has been surely has been that. We uh, sell recycled items at low prices. We provide good quality goods to people that can't afford a high price. And uh, then when we have the money that we make, we funnel it back into charities in the Twin Cities and sometimes across the world. We, Over the history of the store, we've been able to donate about three quarters of a million dollars to operations across the Twin Cities. We're quite proud of that. And uh, by the way, in uh, 2013, we had our best year ever. I mean, excuse me, 2012. 2012, we had our best year we've ever had. We're hoping to have even a better year in 2013. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, So I understand you also drive seniors to your church. Yeah. What's, What's that like? Well, we talk about populations. We talk about the people with mental illnesses of being a a group of people, I believe another group of people that is very underrepresented 
you know, very uh, looked over, passed over, are the seniors. And I uh, got a lot of my help. I keep talking about this help I needed. Well, that's the nature of mental health. I have to stay on focus. I have to focus on positive. The seniors helped me to uh, maintain a focus on Christianity. I'm driving them to church. We're talking about everything. But I can always see the thread of religion and the the hope of religion, the positives that are going on in society. It's a big, uplifting thing. I think the seniors are have been way overlooked in the American society and other societies are revered. You know, I'm really thinking that uh, it's a great thing if we could uh, use some of our seniors for guidance more often. So, uh, we, what other activities do you, do are you involved in? Well, I had uh, been to Haiti four times back in the early uh, late '90s, early 2000s. I went to India. Uh, I have a friend. His name is Hank Garwick. His wife, Daddy Garwick, bless her, just passed away a couple months ago. But they had been close friends. We had they had uh, really been instrumental in uh, creating partnerships throughout the world and under privileged areas. And I had worked with them to uh, to um, bring my talents, what I could do, what I, and then also for what it primarily was, was a learning experience for me to be placed in environments of extreme poverty that I had never seen, just heard about, but never experienced. And so it's really an eye opener and it helped me in the long run really appreciate a lot more of what I got and um, in America. And that also made me realize that these people can be helped. And also the, the primary thing is my mental illness didn't seem so bad because I said, if these people can live in these dire kind of circumstances, still be smiling and joking, you know, I uh, certainly can with a mental illness. It's not the mental illness is not the end of the world. So how's your how's your mental illness actually at that time? Well, um your mental health, I mean. You know, that's part of the reason I had to break up with Janet is that